ankylosing spondylitis. Synonyms, Marie Strumpel disease, bamboo spine, poker back. Introduction. Ankylosing spondylitis, as, is an inflammatory disorder of unknown cause that primarily affects the axial skeleton. The disease usually begins in the second or third decade of life. Onset of the disease in adolescence correlates with a worse prognosis and more severe hip involvement. Men are affected approximately three times more than women. The disease in women tends to progress less frequently to total spinal etiology. The histocompatibility antigen type HLA-B27 is positive in over 90% of patients and 53% of their first-degree relatives. The presence of the HLA-B27 antigen predisposes such individuals to develop arthritis in response to several environmental factors. The triggering event is probably an infection. In many cases the organism is Klebsiella pneumoniae. Pathology the sacroiliac joints and vertebral joints are maximally affect, but the manubriosternal joints, symphysis pubis, costovertebral and sternocostal joints, shoulders, hips, and rarely the joints of the hands and feet may also be affected. The joints show mild synovitis. Periarticular fibrous tissue, ligaments, and articular cartilage also show inflammation. Extraarticular lesions develop in various ligaments, tenoperiosteal junctions, enthesis, the ascending aorta, uveal tract and the upper lobes of the lungs. Ankylosis develops in the joints on account of the tendency for calcification and ossification. The new bones formed are known as syndesmophytes which form the characteristic feature of the disease. Calcification and ossification of the annulus fibrosis and proliferative bony outgrowths from the vertebral borders result in ankyloses of the spine. The spinal column becomes a rigid pillar giving the radiological appearance of bamboo spine. Acute anterior uveitis can antedate the spondylitis. Sacroilitis is usually one of the earliest manifestation of as. The initial symptom is usually a dull pain, insidious in onset, felt deep in the lower lumbar or gluteal region, accompanied by low back morning stiffness of up to a few hours duration that improves with activity and returns following prolonged periods of inactivity. In some patients, bony tenderness over costasternal junctions, spinous processes, iliac crests, greater trochanters, ischial tuberosities, tibial tubercles, and heels may be present. Arthritis in the hips and shoulders may occur. Peripheral arthritis, if present, is usually asymmetric. Constitutional symptoms such as fatigue, anorexia, fever, weight loss, or night sweats may occur. Attacks are typically unilateral and tend to recur. Loss of spinal mobility, with limitation of anterior flexion, lateral flexion, and extension of the lumbar spine, is seen. Disease progression. The Schober test, it is a useful measure of forward flexion of the lumbar spine. The patient stands erect, with heels together, and marks are made directly over the spine 5 cm below and 10 cm above the lumbosacral junction. The patient then bends forward maximally, and the distance between the two marks is measured. The distance between the two marks increases 5 cm or more in the case of normal lumbar mobility and less than 4 cm in the case of decreased lumbar mobility. There is limitation of chest expansion, normal chest expansion is 5 cm or greater. As the disease progresses, the lumbar lordosis is obliterated with accompanying atrophy of the buttocks. The thoracic kyphosis is accentuated. If the cervical spine is involved, there may be a forward stoop of the neck. Hip involvement with ankylosis may lead to flexion contract years. The progression of the disease may be followed by Measuring the patient's height, the patient's height decreases with progression of the disease due to aggregated thoracic kyphosis and forward stooping of the neck. Chest expansion, chest expansion decreases with disease progression, 
and produces a restrictive lung disease, culminating in type 1 respiratory failure. Schober test. Occiput to wall distance when the patient stands erect with the heels and back flat against the wall, this distance increases with increasing involvement of the cervical spine by the disease due to increasing forward stoop of the neck. Complications Complications that can arise are spinal fracture, which can occur with even minor trauma to the rigid, osteoporotic spine. Involvement of the cervical spine can lead to quadriplegia. Cauda equina syndrome is another complication of long-standing spinal disease. Pulmonary involvement is characterized by slowly progressive upper lobe fibrosis. Cardiovascular involvement may manifest as aortic insufficiency or cardiac conduction disturbances, including third-degree heart block. Prostatitis occurs with increased frequency in men. Investigations Elevated ESR and seriactive protein Mild normochromic, normocytic anemia Elevated serum alkaline phosphatase Elevated IgA levels Radiographic findings Blurring of the cortical margins of the subchondral bone, followed by erosions and sclerosis. Erosions leads to pseudo-widening of the joint space and later the joints may become obliterated with onset of bony ankylosis. X-ray of the spine shows a characteristic appearance of a bamboo spine, ossification of interspinous ligaments. There is diffuse osteoporosis of the vertebral column. Erosion of vertebral bodies at the disc margin leads to squaring of the vertebra. Dynamic MRI is highly sensitive and specific for identifying intraarticular inflammation, cartilage changes, and bone marrow edema in sacroiliitis. Modified New York criteria for diagnosis of ankylosing spondylitis. 1. A history of back pain. 2. Limitation of motion of the lumbar spine. 3. Limited chest expansion. 4. Definite radiographic sacroiliitis. Under these criteria, the presence of radiographic sacroiliitis plus any one of the other three criteria is sufficient for a diagnosis of definite ankylosing spondylitis. Treatment The modalities of treatment include physical measures and appliances, medications, irradiation, or surgery. Physical measures and appliances Regular spinal exercises help to correct postural abnormalities and strengthen the spinal ligaments and paraspina muscles. Prolonged immobility tends to accelerate ankylosis and this should be avoided. Spinal braces help to correct postural defects partly. Prismatic spectacles enable the patient with severe kyphosis to see objects in front. Drugs Commonly used drugs are indomethacin, aspirin, and the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. Corticosteroids are not widely used except for limited indications. Solisopyrin in doses of 500 mg 6H orally, given over prolonged periods help to relieve pain of peripheral arthritis and possibly of the axial lesion too. Anti-rheumatic biologicals have been used in the treatment of intractable spondylarthropathies. Infliximab given in a dose of 5 mg kg4 at weeks 0, 2, and 6 produced remarkable improvement when followed up to one year. Reactivation of tuberculosis was seen in 50% of patients. In resistant cases combination of sulfasalazine, Weekly subcutaneous injections of 20 to 25 mg of methotrexate and monthly cycles of 3 injections of 500 mg of 4-methylprednisolone give relief. Pamidronate 60 mg given for as slow infusion has been tried with encouraging results. Surgery Permanent deformities of the spine, hip and other joints can be corrected by orthopedic procedures. The disability has been considerably reduced by total hip replacement which has improved the outlook for patients with ankylosing spondylitis. Thank you.